أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this discussion I will try to present you with various structural miracles of the surah and of course I will try to illustrate its ring composition Let us first try to have a brief idea of its ayats so that we can correlate this in the later part of this presentation In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful say i seek refuge with the rub of mankind rub means lord creator ruler cherisher sustainer one who takes care or saves from harm etc the malik of mankind malik means master king the one who has the ultimate authority the ilah of mankind Allah or God has a very broad sense but it is primarily attributed to the one who is worshiped it is more spiritual in nature but it also refers to the fact that everything is subservient to him even though free will is granted to the human beings and the jinns still at the end of the day we will be made accountable for our deeds in the day of judgment to that one god that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek refuge from the evil of the waswas who withdraws. We ask protection from the harm that might result from the evil whispers. This hidden whispering of the tempters are not continuous in nature as Kannas indicates that the tempters sometimes whispers and sometimes they withdraw or run away. Who whispers into the breast of mankind? It indicates that Only whispering is possible. The tempters doesn't have the authority or power to take charge of our minds directly without our permission. Evil whispers of the jinn and of mankind. This indicates that the tempter may be a jinn or a human being. The word nas mentioned in the end of the surah actually refers to the whisperer and not the victim. Now, let's discuss three kinds of structural miracles in this particular surah let's start with the ring composition first a ring composition is a structural pattern where the surah is split into several parts according to its topic of discussion and then the first part is found to correlate to the last part similarly the second first part correlates to the second last part and this carries on towards the center which seems like a mirrored structure altogether let's consider the first and the last ayats and examine their correlation whoever this tempter may be be that a jinn or a human being their creator cherisher sustainer is the same allah the lord of the universe so protection is sought from our lord who is also the lord of that evil whisperer as well Another connection between these two ayats is that both of these ayats end with the word nas. Now, let's look at the second and fifth ayat of the surah. The Malik of mankind is also the Malik of our sudur, that is our chest and our mind. The Malik has only allowed the tempter to whisper. They cannot take charge or control our minds directly by themselves. So, This Malik can save us from getting affected or harmed by these whispers. The same master can also prevent the tempters from whispering to us when we ask his help. Allah in the third ayat means the worshipped one or the one to whom everyone and everything is subservient. In the fourth ayat we ask protection from the evil that might result as a consequence of these whispers. So we are actually seeking protection from the worshiped one to save us from sinning and thus saving our hereafter. Please note that worship is linked to leading a life in doing what Allah likes and commands us to do and abstaining from what Allah has forbidden us to do. The harm can only occur when we stop worshiping and end up committing sins by following the evil whispers. Worship also includes zikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word kannas also indicates that with the true remembrance and consciousness 
or taqwa of Allah, the evil whisperer retreats. Now, let's see how the surah is fused towards its center. Starting from the first ayat, fused towards the third ayat. In the first two ayats, we declare that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of mankind and the master of mankind. As he is our Lord and master, so in the third ayat, we declare that he is the only one worthy to be worshipped and that we are therefore subservient to him alone. Starting from the last ayat, feels toward the fourth ayat. Moving from the last ayat, it mentions who is actually whispering and the second last ayat mentions where the whispering is taking place. And finally, the fourth ayat mentions from what we are seeking the protection from. The evil genes or human beings can inspire evil thoughts or ideas in our chest or minds. So, we are seeking protection from the harm that might be caused as a result of these whispers. Harm can only happen if we act upon it and commit sins as a result of these whispers. Please note that the whisperers have few limitations. They can't force us to follow them to do bad deeds. Another limitation is that these tempterers even withdraw themselves from whispering into our minds when we truly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his protection. So, we need to seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously in order to withdraw these evil whisperers. Because if our minds are exposed to the continuous evil whispers and temptations, it would be impossible for us to resist them and thus committing the sins. Now, let's find out how the surah is fused towards its center in terms of its subject matter. The surah can be divided into three subject matters. The first subject matter mentions from whom we are seeking the protection. The second subject matter mentions what is the protection. The third subject matter mentions against what the protection is sought. The first part of the fourth ayat which is actually the central subject matter of the surah, mentions from what we are actually seeking the protection from. This is the harm that might occur as a result of these whisperings. Whereas the first three ayats mentions that Allah is our Rabb, Malik and Ilah. He is called thrice with three of his attributes as we are seeking protection from the harm to our hereafter that might result from the evil whispers. The evil whispers might affect our Iman or make us do bad deeds or prevent us from doing good deeds. If we end up following these whispers, it might result to pile up huge amount of sins and prevent us from collecting good deeds, thus making us a loser and ultimate failure in the day of judgment. The last part of the central ayat mentions about the evil whispers. Whereas the last two ayat mentions who actually whisper and where does the whispering takes place. Such wonderful structural miracles are found in this surah. Hope you like this illustration. If you like this video, just hit the like button and share it to the others. And of course, don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thanks.